A lot of people asked how I discovered the tumor. My last video was a little out of the blue, so I wanted to share that part of the story next because I think it's important for people to know. But a lot has happened since that last video. And there's kind of a crazy twist at the end, so stay tuned. And for now, I want to keep this as a voiceover and just use some of my favorite puppet footage as the background because this is staying a puppetry channel. This was for a really cool commercial project in Seattle called Flip Your Trip. If you want more information on the build, be sure to check the description for the original build video. Okay, so how did I find out that I had brain cancer? Well, like so much of the situation, it was pretty random and sudden, and things moved very quickly. As I mentioned in my other video, I'm a school teacher during the day. This year, the teacher started a faculty volleyball team that I joined. We'd meet once a week, and we'd try our best. It was just about having fun. And the last game I played, I walked off the court after the match. I was just about to rinse the sand off my feet, and the next thing I knew, I woke up on the ground with my coworkers and paramedics around me. At that moment, I was feeling really embarrassed, and I didn't know how much time had passed or any idea of what had happened. Apparently, I went down, started shaking, turned blue, and it lasted for about two to three minutes or so. Luckily, one of the players on the other team was a nurse and recognized that I was having a seizure. This turned out to be really important because by the time the paramedics got there, the seizure was over, and based on what they had assessed me, they just thought I had like low blood sugar or something, which was not the case. So it was great that I was able to give the hospital the correct information based on what the nurse had told us. But anyway, it was very shocking to hear that I had a seizure. I had never had a seizure before in my life. And to add on top of that, what makes it seem so random and sudden is before this happened, I felt great. I was hydrated. I didn't overexert myself. It's kind of impossible for me to overexert myself on this volleyball team because we have so many players. And I was feeling completely normal and healthy. I'm telling you, there was nothing wrong. There was no tell that anything was wrong and no sign that I was going to have the seizure. It just happened and I woke up on the ground. Anyway, next the ambulance took me to a hospital near my house. Once there, they did a CT scan on my head. That's where things got a little weird because they wouldn't say anything about the results. They just said they needed to transfer me to another hospital to get an MRI so they can get a better picture of what they're seeing. They clearly knew more about what was going on than they were telling me in the moment. In hindsight, I understand why. I know all about using the right tool for the job, but I do wish they were a little bit more transparent about it. Anyway, I was transferred to the next hospital, got the MRI, and confirmed that I have a brain tumor. It was pretty surreal to hear, especially since I had no symptoms at all. Looking it up, common symptoms for a brain tumor can be headaches that gradually become more frequent and more severe, Unexplained nausea, vomiting, vision problems such as blurred vision, double vision, loss of peripheral vision. None of this ever happened to me. I was 100% completely normal. And not only did I have none of these symptoms, again, I felt great. Never felt weird at all. And I even hesitate to say this, but pretty much my whole life, I've been a person who doesn't really even get headaches. I've been very lucky that I just, just don't really get headaches. So... Obviously, that luck caught up with me a little bit. I'd prefer some minor headaches to a brain tumor, without a doubt. So I never would have known about the tumor if I did not have that seizure. So in a way, that seizure probably kind of saved my life. Because even if I was someone who got headaches and that was my symptom, people ignore headaches sometimes for a while. And this can keep on developing further and further. And having a seizure kind of brings you to action right away. And it's much safer than if I had had a stroke or something else. There's other things that this tumor potentially could have triggered that could have been much more severe. So even though having seizures really, really stinks, and I have a lot to say about the seizures I've had, I've had four since then. And even though me having seizures makes it so that I can't make puppets right now and use my tools, it turns out it, it, it apparently is one of the safest ways to figure it out, considering the alternatives. And that little surprise twist that I mentioned earlier is that three or four years ago, I actually had my head scanned for another reason. And that's the thing, is there was no sign of anything three or four years ago. So we do know that this is a relatively very recent development, probably within the last year or two, because there was nothing there four years ago based on the scans that I had before. 
which is scary to think about how fast things can develop and escalate. And like I said before, a lot more has happened. So I want to do another two to three more videos kind of like this, explaining some of what happened next. About surgery, which was a really fascinating story. I might include some pictures of that too. Let me know if that's something in the comments you want to see. Oh, don't worry, it won't be like, it won't be great. It's not going to be photos like of surgery. It's just going to be pictures of me after surgery. Um, I know I posted one of them after day one. Day one was... Uh, I looked normal after day one. I didn't realize that it took a couple days for the swelling and stuff to uh, to come up. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. If I do put it in, it'll be a timestamp to skip ahead for anyone that doesn't want to see it. But I think it could be helpful for people who want to understand the situation. I was pretty sensitive about the images at first. But now that I'm mostly healed from surgery and my face is back to normal, I, I, feel, I feel like it's... It's less scary because while it's happening, it doesn't feel temporary. And uh, since that part is over, I'm much more comfortable sharing it. Thank you, everyone, so much for your support. We've received so much support from, from the community, from my school, from the puppetry community, from everybody. My family and I are full of gratitude for all the support we've received and that we continue to receive because this is still a developing situation. Even though we've been going through it for so long, there's still so much more we're discovering. I'm going through the radiation and chemo right now, so we'll really get our next big update after all that treatment and I get my next MRI to see how effective that treatment has been. And I think that's when we're really going to find out a lot more information. But like I said, in the meantime, I still have a couple other stories to tell you about some of the seizures and about the brain surgery, which was really interesting because, surprise twist, I had to be awake for it. So that's something I, it's a kind of an interesting story that I wanted to tell you guys next. So stay tuned, and all the links are down in the description. Thanks so much for your support.